Welcome back to the vlog. Starting BDG. I don't really officially have a business. I'm just freelancing over here. It's Friday afternoon, about 3 p.m. It's at Starbucks all morning. I didn't get to the gym yesterday. I didn't get to it today, so I figured I'm gonna do some incline walking on the treadmill. Shout out Brandon for this. Look at this little ghetto setup I got here. Treadmill goes here, but I can only put my phone here, which is like kind of like head level. You can see it down. So I taped the paper plate to the back so I could put phone up here rather than here. I've been watching The Sopranos like the last month, but they're hour episodes. There's like six, two parts of six, season six, consuming my life. I'm like trying to go to sleep early, but I keep staying up to like three or 4 a.m. because I can't stop watching the damn Sopranos. So I'm like, I gotta finish this shit. So I figure I'll kill two birds with one stone. I'll just walk for an hour. I'll watch an episode, get a little workout in, and then Labor Day weekend starts. Tomorrow, I think I'm gonna go into the city. I usually go down the shore, you know, Belmar kind of thing, but I've already did that for Memorial Day weekend. I did it for July 4th weekend. Yes, a little uh, very hectic during the holiday weekend. And then I have E-Town Get Down Big Fantasy Football Draft on Monday, which I'll put up a whole separate vlog of that. I'll have bits and pieces in here, but it's going to be a good weekend, and welcome to the episode. So it is Saturday morning. Your boy officially put in about six or seven hours of work at Starbucks and it's only I think like 2.30 or 3 right now. So I'm done working for today and I'm debating right now going, in, going to New York City, hanging out with some of my friends and, and my sister and stuff. That call I had earlier, I don't I don't think, I think it was in last episode, I had a call with a possible client. It went really well. It's probably one of the best calls I've had and I just sent them over a big proposal basically all morning on it so I'm excited to hear back from them. I probably won't hear anything within the next few days, probably like Tuesday or Wednesday, but it'll probably be in this video if I do hear back. The other cool thing, I just got home and the mail is here. Mail time. I don't know what that is. So, I believe I went over it last video, but me and this brand, Sleek Supply, are officially partnered. A lot of you have probably heard of like MVMT watch company. They have very similar style watches, very minimal, very plain, really nice. I'm actually about to put this on and wear it. Fuck it. Now I'm looking good. Now I'm feeling good. I'm headed into the city strictly because of because this came in today. If you are, I don't think they have women's watches up yet, but male watches, these are sweet. They have about five or six different variations of them. If you use promo code Big Dogs. 20% off your entire order. That's what's up, I'm hooking y'all up. So go purchase a watch if you need one for a wedding, if you need one for work. These are minimal, so they can go with basically any outfit and still look good. Let me slap this on. Sleek supply. Go get yours, Big Dogs promo code 20% off. I'm gonna say screw it, I'm gonna call my sister and head into the city, have myself a day. You know, I talk about it, I said be spontaneous when you can, when you're young, while you're still alive and you got your limbs intact. So I gotta put my money where my mouth is. You work hard, play hard. I put in my work this morning and now I'm ready to play a little bit. All right, so we hit the city. And I'm walking back to Penn Station. Pretty sure it's like 80 blocks. I don't know why I'm doing this. I just bought this little coffee for $4.35. So in New York, there's a street called Houston Street, but it's spelled like Houston. And if you say Houston, if you're not from New York, you say Houston. And anyone who's from New York immediately gets angry and corrects you. It's Houston, not Houston. I'm like, all right, oh, you guys know Cat's Deli? You ever heard of that? I can't turn this shit around, can I? So that's a little fun fact for you tourists if you ever come to New York. Don't call it Houston. If you're not from the city, number one thing to do is bottomless brunch. You can get like two or three hours for 20 or 30 bucks, and it's my man. <laughs> I love New York. Unlimited drinks. You gotta find someone that has margaritas though. Otherwise it ain't worth the money. I also feel like I'm about to get hit by a car because I just walk through the streets when I'm not supposed to. I probably deserve to get hit by a car. I would actually like to get hit by a car right now. I honestly just walked that apartment I was in and just picked a direction and I haven't stopped walking in that direction so I don't even know if I'm going the right way. Don't be like me. Every Instagram girl's fucking favorite wall right here. Got draft day coming up tomorrow. Get fucking rained on now. I'm the worst. It's Labor Day Monday, which means it's draft day. You know we always go suited up, shirt and tie, mandatory, jacket, Optional, strongly recommended. We look quite dapper when we draft. So I'm ready to roll, heading over to my friend's house for a bit. It's gonna be a good ass draft. I'm doing a whole separate vlog on that. It should be funny, so if you haven't seen that, definitely go check it out. But just packing up, about to head over. It's D 
Dean's having an allergic auto reaction to the Cavs right now. If he dies, we auto pick for the rest of the draft for him. Welcome everyone back to the E Town Get Down. This is round nine. Welcome our newcomers, Shane Fulky Mac. <laughs> Steven Meatballs over here. You see the camera set up. We're gonna have a confession cam. So at any point during the draft, if you want to go talk about your picks, talk shit about anyone else's picks, you're welcome to go. We'll set it up over there. And for this year, punishment is the bathroom attendant. We'll get into specifics <laughs> later down the uh, down the year. Oh yeah, I also made a mistake. Um, I drafted a guy named Robert Kelly. I thought his nickname was Fab Rob, like fabulous, but uh, it turned out that it's Fat Rob, and he's a fat piece of shit. So that was another mistake. So. Whoever thought it was a good idea to bring Steve Magnani in this league is a moron. He is a cancer to everybody. He's a no good, dirty, rotten piece of shit. What's cracking, homies? I just got done at uh at the gym right behind me. My split as of late has been pretty messed up because <clears throat> honestly, I've just been working such long days and, and like nights and stuff too. When you're starting something like I'm doing, you start to have to sacrifice things and you prioritize things, right? And I feel like for the most part, I've been prioritizing my work, both my marketing and you know getting content out to you guys, and that's taking up such a large portion of my days. So I'm lucky if I get to the gym three times a week now. So I try to get in there and do like full body workouts, lunges, bench press, a bunch of pull-ups, a couple more like, you know, random exercises just to make sure I'm hitting all the muscles. Like I just said, like you have to start making sacrifices and, and choose what, you know, what you want to do and what, what you're prioritizing. And right now, obviously this is, this is what's most important to me. I do feel like it is eating away at other parts of other aspects of my life, I guess. Relationship wise with, with some people, you know, if I'm home, my mom comes home from work and my head's in the computer, sometimes I'll go days, like, you know, a couple of days without kind of talking to her about anything. I'm definitely not, like, in contact with my friends as much throughout the week. Anything with, like, girls, it's just, like, not that, like, it, it's hard for me to prioritize them because I know for the most part, like, my friends will, you know, my best friends will always be there, so they're not, like, pissed if I, if I don't text them back for, like, six hours or eight hours at a time or whatever, but there's definitely possibilities that I'm missing out on other you know, opportunities or relationships that I could be having, but you know, that's life right there, just making choices and looking forward and just realizing what you what you kind of started out with, like why, why are you doing it in the first place, right? So when you make those choices and you're like, oh, should I do this or should I do that? And you choose to do what you set out to do, you just gotta keep that in mind and that will always kind of kickstart you back in like, oh yeah, you know, this is why I'm doing that. So if I choose not to say go out on a date with someone because I need to get work done, it sucks at the time, it's like a, it's like a short term L, but in the long term, you know, that's what you need to be doing because you need to stay consistent with these things and it needs to be a grind day in and day out. So that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. You know, it's it's a little, a little disheartening just where I'm at right now, but I know it'll be worth it in the long run. So I got a workout in, I'm at the mall right now. I am shopping for my mom. Her birthday was September 4th yesterday. It was Labor Day weekend, so nothing was open, so I couldn't get her a gift and she wasn't home at all during her birthday. She was in uh, Brooklyn because my grandpa is pretty sick right now, so she needs to help my grandma taking care of him. So she's basically been like, not living there, but she's barely been home the last month or so. She's just been helping out with him so much. She's thinking like, what would she like? And I think I thought of a really good gift. I want to get her a nice, a really nice necklace with a tourist symbol, the sign, because that's what my grandpa is. He was born in, in May. I think his birthday's May 19th, so he's a tourist. So I think she'd really, really, really like it. One that always just like reminds her of him. You know, you want it to have some thought behind it and you want to get, you don't necessarily need to get creative, but it needs to be thoughtful. And I feel like this is a good one for her. I think she'll really like that because like I said, my grandpa is kind of sick right now. So we don't know, uh, we don't really know what's up. So, um, so I'm gonna go get that. I'll show you guys the necklace afterwards. What's up fam? From our Starbucks right now. Just got off the call with the uh, client I was on the phone with Thursday, Friday, and we locked it up. So we are signing a contract for six months. I also met a dude here at the Starbucks. He saw me on my Shopify website, and he is the owner of a website called proteingold.com. And we started talking, and uh, I'm gonna sit down with him and it looks like he is definitely interested in what I do for his company. They're pretty big already. I'm surprised they're not really doing this already. I mean, he was showing me all his social media accounts and it's like 100,000 followers and he has all these influencer marketing and stuff. He's just, I guess, lacking on the technical side a little bit in terms of like digital marketing. 
So I said, hit your boy up, let me know. It's raining right now, I'm sitting under an umbrella. Things are going good business-wise. Kind of, uh, I'm just gonna be working my face off for the next, I feel like until football season is over. Oh God, this is gonna be tough. But I'm ready to grind. Kickoff is tomorrow night. I literally couldn't be more excited. I got one more fantasy draft tonight. I forgot to tell you about my mom's necklace. There's four jewelry stores in the mall. None of them had the Taurus horoscope. They're all like, oh, we need to order it. We'll get it here by like four days. I'm like, bro, my, I'm already a day late for my mom's birthday. So I went on Amazon. I got a nice, it was like, I forget how many carats, like 18 carat. Nice necklace, uh, overnight shipping, so it'll be here tomorrow. It's nice, I'll show it to you when it gets in. And speaking of Amazon, picked up this little bad boy. It's a portable phone charger. Now, I always, like, I hate when I see people with them. I'm like, that's the corniest shit ever. But every time I'm out, like, I go out in New York City. Actually, it was perfect, because I think the beginning of this episode was like that, where I end up in New York City, and then I don't know where, well, I know where I am. Like, I know whose apartment I end up sleeping in, but I don't know, like, where I am geographically, and then I start walking to Penn Station or something, and fucking, and then my phone dies, and I always end up needing it to, like, get to somewhere call somebody so i bought one of these bad boys 16 dollars off amazon sick i bought my mom flowers too i had to put it in the blender because there's <laughs> there no vases left so if you're like a, an iphone user or an android user it has this shit attached so you don't need extra wires it's crazy We've got the iphone plug right here this all you got to do is charge it at home it takes like i don't know it didn't take long to charge and you can bring this and it fits in your wallet it's so small it's sweet i'll link this down below if you're interested in getting one because i tried to live stream on youtube i was like yeah let's go because i was answering a lot of comments at the time a lot of people were tweeting at me so i'm like fudge it we're just gonna go on twitter i mean on youtube and live stream because i'd never done that before and i want to do that for football season like sunday mornings before the games kick off to interact with my youtube subs you know talk about our saturday nights who had the best stories who got laid, all that good stuff. We'll talk some fantasy football too. So I went to try it out and then within like two seconds, my phone died. So I know I'm gonna be putting this thing to use on Saturday nights, Sunday mornings. So this is some stuff I haven't covered in a while really. It's more like behind the scenes business stuff. Like I mentioned yesterday, uh, we have the new client that I'm onboarding. So you gotta go through all the contract stuff. And this was definitely like a learning process for me, having to draft up a contract and basically what that contract is, the date of services, like how long we'll be running for, exactly what responsibilities I have as an independent contractor, as well as what they have, any like legal issues that would arise. And then me being an independent contractor, just saying that, you know, I'm not an employee of their company and just some signatures and like any attachments you need to kind of verify what you're saying inside the contract. I'm also going over, I'm doing like some accounting work, basically trying to keep track of all my expenses and all my income because you know when you're working by yourself and there's a great there's a great website called wave.com and it's it's a free software perfect for people like me where you can send out invoices to clients and it keeps all the records of of all the invoices that you sent you can hook up your bank accounts to kind of track your your finances and stuff so wave.com if anyone is in the same situation as me i send my clients invoices through that and then i try to keep track of everything in terms of like business expenses and stuff because when you're you know freelancing and when you're on your own you will eventually have to pay taxes at the end of the year so if you're working full-time for a company you know you sign your w-4s you sign all those whatever and and for the most part they'll be taking taxes out of each paycheck so you don't have to worry about it come tax return season right you're usually like the last few years i've been getting a nice little fat paycheck around april or may whenever they come out i'm like let's go this year it's going to be completely opposite like i'm going to have to pay a shitload in taxes so that's something you got to think about to be honest with you by the end of the year i have no idea idea how much I'm going to be making, but I have to keep track of, you know, how much I'm making from my marketing services, how much I'm making in terms of what YouTube has paid me, how much I've made off my Shopify store. So my draft guide, as well as any of the hats I sold, any other apparel or merchandise that has come off the site. So you kind of have to add all those things up together to see your net income, you know, your net revenue for the year. And then the government's obviously gonna kill me and I'm gonna have to pay probably like 25% of everything I've made back in taxes. So I have to keep that in mind when I'm looking at my bank account. I'm like, oh, you know what? It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna have to pay a lot of money in taxes. We'll just put it that way. So I'm doing a lot of behind the scenes work right now just to get everything in order. I'm not exactly sure how you guys work. I, I mean, I've, I've had, blogs in the past where I've worked with advertisers that, you know, on a CPM basis that kind of, they throw up display ads, but I'm not exactly sure how, how you guys uh, operate in terms of like YouTube. We kind of are now giving the YouTube thing a whole try. So we've been in touch with YouTube and micro influencers, pay our writers based on the amount of traffic they generate. 
and we also have something called social blaster, you would be considered a social blaster, aka a micro influencer who just doesn't write, but they share content. We've just recently been funded by Google. We partnered with AOL. So we're really taking off to bring on as many influencers as we can, like yourself. So it's basically me a micro influencing my followers to a URL that I would, you know, kind of shoot out to them. And to be honest with you, I don't think, like you said, I'm, I'm kind of on the smaller side and I, I don't know if my audience would really, me driving them to another, to somewhere else, like something that's not mine, like that I didn't create or a blog post I didn't make or a video or something like that. I'm not sure that they'd be receptive to that. I'll definitely be in touch then, Morgan, all right? Thanks, Nicholas, have a great day. All right, appreciate the call, bye. All right, so that was a company called Blasting News. I guess they're like a syndication website. They take a lot of different content from other people and they kind of put it into one main source. And what they do is like they reach out to me because if you have a large following, they wanna bring people into their website. So my first ever blog I had uh, about fantasy football, like three or four years ago, I had an advertisement company reach out to me I forget what the name of it. I still randomly get checks for them. It's kind of crazy. I don't know why my website's not even running anymore. Beside the point, I digress. Advertising companies or the middlemen for advertising companies work on, for the most part, a CPM. That's cost per impression. Cost per 1,000 impressions because M is the Roman numeral for 1,000. And that's how marketing companies work. For the most part, some of them do CPC, a cost per click rather than a cost per impression. Or like say you go on ESPN.com or you go on whatever websites that you guys go on, you see all these ads on the side, right? You see pop-up ads and shit like that. The way that website, like if you went to my website and saw pop-up ads or ads on the side, you'd work off a CPM, right? Say your CPM is $12, that means cost per 1,000 impressions is $12. I would need 1,000 of you guys to go onto my site that ad, that would be an impression. That'd be one impression, one of you guys. A thousand people come, I'll get paid $12. Now, if you're a blog or you're a website that gets a ton of traffic, like BuzzFeed, sure they have millions and millions of viewers a day, right? That advertisement money is a lot of revenue. And that's how, you know, someone, if you're like, oh, how does blogging work? Like, how do you make money off advertisements, right? That's exactly how it works. And what this company wanted me to do is basically, they want me to take a piece of the content that they have written on their website, right? Whether it's an NFL piece or a fantasy football piece, not something I've written, something one of their writers has written. And they want me to kind of say to you guys, like, hey, followers, check out this piece of content, you know, fantasy football week one, trade targets, whatever. I'm like, click the article down below and they would pay me on a CPM basis. So I think it was either 16 or 24 bucks. I would need a thousand of you guys to click on that and I'd get paid depending on how many people clicked on it. Now, I mean, in theory, yeah, it sounds great, but like, I don't think that would resonate with my audience at all. If I'm always like, oh guys, click this content, this content, I have no idea who the writer is. I have no idea if their work is any good. Like, I'm not gonna keep pushing out bullshit articles just to try to make 15 bucks here and there. They did say I could write my own pieces though for the website, which is something I will consider doing because if I'm gonna be writing a blog post a week anyways for fantasy, I might as well have it posted on their site and then and then you guys would be like, my fantasy football audience would be reading it anyways. So if I can get a unique URL from them to link to my site, then I'll get paid for the amount of traffic I'd bring in with my regular posts. So that's something that's somewhere I would consider doing. Otherwise, that's basically how marketing works. But working on a CPM is such a waste of money. And I see so many companies doing it that advertise online because as just consumers, as you and I, when we go on websites, you were like basically trained not to even see the right timeline or the left timeline. You don't even see that because you're expecting that all that bullshit to just be advertisement. So at this point, no one looks at that, let alone clicks on some shit like that that looks extra spammy. Shoe companies advertising on the left or right side, you see that shit, it automatically looks like spam. I'm not gonna click that and then go buy shoes because of that ad. And a lot of companies still do that stuff, which is such a waste of time and money. It's, it's like Thursday right now. It's about four o'clock, so this episode is rounding down. The first NFL game on tonight, which I'm super excited for. I'm trying to make some sit start decisions. My YouTube channel has grown to about 4,000 subscribers. My Twitter is almost at 1,000, or it's at like 800, but it'll probably be at 1,000 in, in a few weeks, which is pretty cool. So I'm starting to get a little bit of an influence, a little social influence going on. But at the same time, that means like I have more, you know, the reason I feel like I grew throughout this, this summer is because, I mean, the content was good, sure, I worked hard on it, but it's also because I'm always engaging. I try to answer every single comment I get on, on a YouTube video. Some of the videos alone, one video can have up to 150, 200 comments, and I try to answer every single one. But when it gets to the point where I'm getting 20 emails a day, 35 Twitter questions a day, hundreds and hundreds of YouTube comments, like I can't get around to it. 
and it sucks because like I said, that's how I feel like I've grown. That's how I got a connection with the audience. That's how you build a loyal audience. So I'm putting a shitload of time into just interacting and answering questions for you guys or for whoever you know asks me the questions. But it's definitely gonna get harder as this keeps growing. And it's almost like how normal people, you know, go to work, the first thing they do, or when they wake up, the first thing they do is like check their email, answer their emails for the first hour. Like YouTube comments and social media comments like are my email. You know, for the first hour, I'll be answering people's questions and shit. And you might not think that's work, but to me, that's absolutely part of my like work day. Cause that is 100% how you grow and how you build a loyal kind of like following or an audience and in the long term that's what you need I'm not thinking short term I'm thinking long term when I do things like that if I'm putting in an hour two hours a day answering questions it's because I know down the road I'll have those people that will always you know be with me in my whatever entrepreneurial shit that I do down the road that's really what this is all getting at so that was a long I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore but this is probably gonna wrap the video up unless I do something cool for the game tonight which I don't know if I'm doing I might just have to stay here and work for the rest of the night but again thank you for tuning in if you did and if you enjoyed please go give the video a thumbs up be back next Saturday as always try to drop this video at either noon or 1 p.m. Eastern time every Saturday on Monday, I actually have a training call with that freelance company I kind of mentioned before. So if I can rack up, so I have Fantasy Jocks, this new client, the freelance company, hopefully this, I'll, I'll talk, sit down with this protein company and see what's up. But if I can rack up maybe like one or two more good paying things, I'm definitely on the road to being able to finance my lifestyle completely independent of being home, being with my mom. When I went into this, I had no idea how long it would take. Like when I was working in New York, right? I know I wanted to I wanted to move out into New York. Like that was my plan. Actually, I was working in Paramus and I wanted to stay there for a while, save up my money, eventually move into the city. I started working in New York and I was thinking the same thing. And then I was just like, nah, this is like what I need to do. I need to branch off and I need to start my own thing. I need to go after this now because this is the only time I'm ever going to be able to do this in my life, you know? So I did that and I had no idea at what point or how long it would take for me to financially be able to support myself and I'm definitely not there yet, but I think I'm getting close. And I was doing, when I was talking about doing the behind the scenes like taxes and stuff, up to this point, I've been on my own for barely five months and I've made around $13,000 on income. That's not a lot compared to people that work full time, but me starting from absolute scratch and me having nothing to that in five months is really not bad. I'm proud of that. I'm sure that will increase as the second half of the year comes and I'm sure that will only increase more next year. So I'm going in the right direction and I knew it was gonna be a slow, long process, but we're getting there. So that's that. Give it a thumbs up, please, and I'll see y'all on the next episode.